What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 12 of the Artificial Intelligences in StarCraft 2 with Python tutorial series. In the previous tutorials we built and trained a neural network and now we want to put it to use. So in order to do that, it's not too difficult. All we're going to do is I'm heading to part 9. Uh, and scrolling on down to the very bottom where I post the full script and I'm going to copy that. Paste. So this was the one that we used to actually build the data. Now all we want to do is rather than randomly attack, use the model to choose to attack. So um, basically we just want choice equals to rather than be random, be the model. So not too many changes need to be done in order for that to happen, but we do have to make some changes. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, we're going to come up to the tippity top and we are going to import Keras. Then what we're going to do is, um, I guess we could, I think the first thing I'll do is we'll load in the model or, so, so basically, be, to go through testing, we want to be able to use this model both still as random, but also as the neural network. So the way that I thought about doing that is to just have like a flag. So like in, in itself, uh, after self, we'll have a use model. And for now, I'll set the default to false. Let's get rid of that space there. And then what we're going to say is if self.use model. So if that is the case, let's go ahead and just print out some information uh, using model. And then self.model equals keras.models.load underscore model. And then in here, you'll put whatever model you're gonna load. So um, again, the, the model, the link is in part 11. Um, you can come here and just download this model that's already trained. Feel free to train your own if you want to try like a different model or something like that and see how you can do or you want to do more epochs or whatever, have at it. Um, I hosted all the data, hosted the models, do what you want. So um, anyways, this is the name of the model. So I'm going to hopefully highlight it, copy, and get lost for a second. <laughs> Where? Oh, here we go. <laughs> okay. So um, so now we've got the model itself. Now, uh, now what I want to do is at least, I think before we start copy pasta -ing, I'm going to at least get the usage of the model in. So we'll come down here and then basically what we need to do is have like an if statement here as well. So if self.use model, um, then we want to, you know, use the model. Um, else, the choice is uh, just take a random action. Now, if we want to use the model, how would we have to do that? Well, we would have to say something like this, like prediction equals self.model, um, whoops, self.model, and then you use dot predict notation. And then to pass, well, at least the way predict works is you pass a, a an array or a list of things that you want to be predicted. So no matter what, it has to be a list. Um, so then what we're going to want to pass is that like flipped, um, that flipped input, but one day I'll find it. Oh, it is already self.flipped. Uh, I can't, I copy and pasted this for part nine. So I'm going to assume I had already made that change. Um, that was a change I had to make at some point. I don't know. I'm not sure why. Anyways. Um, okay. So we want to predict self.flipped. So that's actually pretty simple. Um, but we also need to reshape it with that whole negative one, then 176, then 200, and then the three channels. Then, are you kidding me? I don't actually think, I mean, it's a parameter, but if the parameter is a list, do you still, does Pep8 have information on that? <laughs> Anyway, okay, so that's our prediction. And then our choice would be numpy.argmax prediction. Prediction. Um, and not just prediction, but the zeroth prediction. Because again, we have to pass a list and then it returns you a list of predictions. Then, um, 
at least in the text-based version of the tutorial, I did this little thing, and I really just did it for debugging, so I'm just gonna copy and paste it in. So then we just have this little dictionary here. Really? I wonder why the spacing looks okay in the text-based tutorial, but not here. Anyway, um, here I'm just simply outputting what the choice happened to be. Uh, the next thing is, uh, even if, so in this case, it was if you had idle void raise, but the other question is if, um, so like we kind of want to do this, like cut here and then let's pick, that's why it wasn't, that's why it's not aligned because I did this in the text-based tutorial. Okay. Um, I think this is working out. Right, okay. So so we definitely, like, we don't need to be using our GPU to make predictions if we haven't met this if statement. So I wanted to move that down. By that same token, we didn't need to be making the choice before. It didn't really make logical sense. Like, if we can't make the choice, we can't make the choice. Uh, what is happening there? I don't appreciate that. Um... So why this didn't stay in line, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> that was, that's a lot of spaghetti going on. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we're going to be all right. Okay. So that should. Um, well, so the default when we run send to bot is actually off. So what we'd want to say is use model equals true. And now we should use the model. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And we're going to see that it fails. And the reason it failed, <laughs> let's see why it says use model is false if use model has no attribute if self.use model. Oh, Okay, so so really use model would that that's not necessarily yeah. So self.use model, we're gonna set that to use model because not only do we want to reference it here, uh, but we want to reference it everywhere in this object. At least right now we just have like the one spot that we're trying to reference that, but we are referencing it outside of this in it in it method too. Okay, try again. All right, the game is at least loading up. Come on, you can do it. So at least in the last one, my video and audio didn't seem to be chopping out despite it was lagging in OBS. So hopefully that doesn't happen here. Uh, but if it does, I apologize. It, actually, our, our GPU should not be in use at all until we produce void rays. So while we wait on that, a thank you to my recent sponsors slash members, Daniele Lubrano. Did I do that right? Oliver Halls, XStorm78, and Moses. You guys are spectacular. Thank you very much for your support. So... We are still waiting. Do we have our... We do have a gateway. We got our cybernetics core over here. What we got going on over here? Okay, we got a Stargate coming up. We do have an observer heading off onto his... Doing his objective. So one of the things that um, I guess we can talk about now is like what are, what are we kind of wanting to do in the future? Uh, wow, we already sent... <laughs> okay, so it's already making choices to attack the enemy. Um, which is interesting. So I guess now I'll talk about um, how this model actually did. So in my testing, the trained model, um, are we running, who are we running against here? Is this hard or medium? Okay, it's just medium here. But um, <laughs> wow, we rushed and demolished this gentleman. <laughs> See ya. Um, we're not always that lucky. So, 
So in at least with 100 games each, the random model defeated the medium AI 44% of the time, and the trained model defeated the medium AI 66% of the time. We'll just accept this. Um, great, thank you. Uh, are we going to hang here? I can't remember if we iterated. No. So, um, so the model definitely does better. So with this, I'm pretty confident that I'm, I can spend a little more time trying to actually make um, a quality AI that, that isn't as bad as this one. So this one has a lot of mistakes, a lot of spaghetti code going on. Uh, not to say that the next one won't have horrible code too, but but there's like a lot of little stuff that's just wrong here, and then some stuff I've learned over the over the um, course of making this series. So lots of people have suggested, uh, like for example, the the initial scout probably shouldn't be like the observer; it should just be like a worker unit, right? That's the first thing that you send. Also, the way I'm doing scout is it like flies around. Apparently, you set the scout, and then the radius gets bigger. So probably more what you'd want to do is produce a scout, send it to the main base area. Uh, set up shop there and then probably go to the next two at least resource areas and then also if you aren't fine and then probably wait there and then if you aren't finding if you don't see any enemies in those first like three locations start to look like go to all the other resource areas because that's probably where they are because one of the like biggest issues I had is the AI clearly is winning it's doing really really well but it doesn't finish off the enemy because it doesn't seek them out. It only goes to the enemy start location. So if there's no enemies there, we have to wait until the enemy builds up again and then maybe attacks us and then maybe we happen to find their loca their new location, but that's not working. And eventually we throw an error or something like that and then we lose the game, but we didn't really lose the game. We, we should have won. So uh, stuff like that has to be fixed. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, there, uh, there's a Discord. Po I forget what the Discord channel is, but anyways, um, there's the the actual ladder for Python s. What is it? Sc2ai.net. Yeah. If you go here, you can go to the Discord and stuff. And some of the people have been pretty helpful in there. And one of the guys, Archiatris, I think, is the name. Um, anyways, suggested two things. One is like we're just kind of like pulling radius out of thin air. Um, when you can actually just reference the radius of the actual object, which makes way more sense. Um, and then also he shared the a way to actually acquire game time, like real game time, um, which is so much better than you know estimating iterations per minute. So stuff like that. And there's, there's a bunch of other things. I've just made a huge list of all the stuff that I kind of want to fix here. Also, we want a more complex AI. We want an AI that decides when do we build a scout, right? And then if we have a scout, the scout just follows some rules. But when do we build scouts? Should we build a worker? Should we, um, and then again, when we build workers, we'll still use probably distribute workers, but we'll, when do we build a worker? Um, when should we maybe expand? So any of, the op any of the choices that are made, any one of the four choices that we made prior to like, uh, or at least in this script, I think the new average was like, 10 or 11 actions per game and we average somewhere between 30 and like 50 choices a game so so you only need like whatever the thing is whatever the action is that you might want to take you just want it to be around 11 of them per game as long as you can have that many um, it, it's a choice that you could probably throw in so anyway stuff like that which you know like building scouts building workers building void rays what to attack, better scouting, better, um, probably some other attack options. We might change those around. Anyways, there's a whole lot of things we, we've got to fix here. So, so anyways, um, in the coming tutorials, probably more, at least maybe the base code will, will probably just run through whatever I end up coming up with. Um, but yeah, we'll see. So if you have any other suggestions about things that you've seen that I haven't mentioned here, also Supply Depot, this was never the correct naming. It should have been Command Center. I, For the record, I knew that, but <laughs> I, for, I, I just typed the wrong thing. Um, anyways, um, yeah. So there was that. I think there were some other things too. Oh, someone else pointed out in the Scout. I think I fixed it though before this. Where's our Scout? Um...
Where's the shoot? Okay, so no, I didn't even fix this one either. I swear I fixed this, um, but I guess I, co I copied it from part nine. I fixed it in my own code, but this was also problematic. Enemies, you know, doing a random variance of the enemy start location doesn't make any sense. You should do a random variance of, um, you know, the game map size. <laughs> So this never made any sense. Unfor we're going to toss this anyways, but there were other errors too. Uh, I just are slipping my mind. But anyways, anything else you want to improve or you think should be done better that I haven't brought up or if you want to kind of like reiterate something you've said before, um, now would be the time. Anyways, that's it for now. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in another video.